psychyogi.org. Nemeth and Wachler, 1974. Creating perceptions of consistency and confidence, a necessary condition for minority influence. This is the third study we will be looking at from the Reaching a Verdict section of Reaching a Verdict as part of the OCR A2 psychology course. It is further categorised into minority influence. Remember the last study we looked at, Ash 1955. Ash considered the impact of the majority on the minority in the group. However, Nemeth and Wachler considered the opposite, the influence of the minority on the majority. Referring specifically to juries, can the minority sway the majority to their views on the verdict of a defendant? The background studies that we need to know for this is Rotter 1966 and Moscovici 1985. You may remember Rotter from the background of Johnson and Bowers 2002 from the Turning to Crime section of this course. Rotter, 1966, distinguished between two different types of personality, the internally directed, one with an internal locus, and the externally directed, one with an external locus. The internally directed see their effectiveness and behaviour in terms of their own directions. For example, people who blame themselves for failing at something because they did not practice enough. On the other hand, the externally directed see no connection between their own behaviour and events which they see as beyond their control. For example, people who blame the weather for failing a driving test. Moscovici, 1985, suggests that people who are more internally directed are more likely to resist conforming to the majority. Moscovici also suggests that the consistency of the minority is the most persuasive factor concerning conformity. Moscovici suggests that the reason for this is the consistency creates a sense of certainty and confidence. Aim to investigate the influence of perceived autonomy and consistency on minority influence. To make that slightly more simple, what they actually did was either let people choose the seats, in which case one person was always going to sit at the head of a table, or they would let they would direct people to sit there and one person would always be directed to sit at the head of the table who was a confederate that's where the perceived autonomy comes from did everyone else around them perceive that they had free will and thus does that influence confidence in the person who has the minority who would sit at the head of the table method and design a laboratory experiment in the form of a mock trial participants Participants were split into groups of five, one of whom was the confederate of the experimenter. The participants were all students. Procedure. The group of five had to deliberate on the amount of compensation due to a victim of an injury. After listening to all the facts, the participants made an individual verdict. Once the participants had made their decision, they were taken to another room with a table which had four seats at either side of the table and one at the head of the table. The experimenter's confederate would sit at the head of the table in every condition. There were two conditions, one where the confederate chose to sit at the head of the table and the other where the experimenter directed each individual where to sit. Once all the five participants were seated at the table, they began to deliberate on the case. During this deliberation, the confederate takes a deviant position relative to the other members of the group. The confederate would suggest a compensation of around $3,000 when the other participants were suggesting figures of between $10,000 and $25,000. Findings. The confederate exerts influence when he is consistent and when he is perceived as autonomous because he has chosen his seat as opposed to being seated by the experimenter, which caused the confederate to exert little influence over the group. When the confederate sat at the head of the table, he is seen as more confident and consistent and therefore is better able to influence the group. Conclusion The findings from Nemlis and Washler, 1974, have interesting repercussions for the jury room, where people sit around a long table. 
There are a myriad of examples which show the influence of minorities on the majority. An example of this can be found in the notion of global warming. At one time, global warming was seen as an extremist view and held only by a few scientists, but now it is widely accepted. However, Nemeth and Watchler, 1974, suggest that the effects of a minority group on the majority may be somewhat diminished in a jury room environment due to the limited time for which an unambiguous, a, a unanimous verdict must be reached. Nemeth and Watchler, 1974, evaluation. Remember, this is not an exhaustive list. A strength is the validity. The independent variable was clearly manipulated. However, we do not know the impact of the minority group not sitting at the head of the table. What happens if a person who is the minority sits at the side? We don't know what happens there. A weakness is the ecological validity. Firstly, the study used a mock trial, so that's it's, it's close to being real, but it's not. It's not that high in ecological validity. Secondly, there was only a group of five, which is not reflective of actual juries who have 12 members. There is certainly evidence to suggest that the influence of the minority is somewhat diminished in larger groups of, say, 12. Another strength is construct validity. The study shows evidence for the ideas that the minorities can influence the minority. However, the study lacks further evidence for the influence of minorities in different scenarios, so we can argue that the study lacks generalizability. Ethnocentrism. To further the preceding point, the sample consisted of only students and therefore cannot easily be generalized to larger populations. If you've enjoyed this Psych Yogi presentation, why not subscribe to keep up with all the latest videos?